Welcome back to Milton Daily Homes. It's Chuck here. We got a list of 16 properties today. And if you're planning on coming to Milton this weekend, let us know. We'd be glad to take you on a tour, get you familiar with some of the, the neighborhoods, some of the kinds of homes that are available in your price range, break down some of the extra costs, talk about the things to do first, and just really make sure you're on plan and, and staying safe. So you could book a time at Starbucks or book a tour just over on that hand, or on the, uh, what would be your right-hand side, and we'll get everything together for you. So 1380 Main is the first one up, 229 is the price. It is in the Maple Crossing building. And I find the kitchen looks smaller when you're looking at it from overhead. But overall, this one is a one bedroom and it looks like it's plus a den on top of that where that little table is, which you could probably use as an office or anything else. So um, not bad. You know, the main floor, the, the first floor sometimes takes a hit. I've talked about this numerous times on Daily Homes. But I don't think security is really an issue in Milton. Maybe it is. Maybe for some people it's still that perceived notion. I think it's actually a pretty good thing. Haxton Heights, 343.9. It's an end unit. It's a moon seed, so just under 1,300 square feet. Nice backsplash here. And blurry photos. I can't even believe it. Anyways, the, uh, the rest of the home looks okay. It's a three bedroom, so the two bedrooms that are not the master end up being a little bit smaller. Uh, but this is what they're going for these days. They've really taken a crank up in the last 30 days or so. We've seen the prices go up. Uh, it might be a little bit high, but it's not that far off. Carver's at 379. And uh, so you've got your kitchen here with an island. There's a there's a wall where the island comes out, and then there's two entrances on either side. There's the eat in there, uh, your family room with a fireplace. And it's got a nice layout. The bedrooms are really big upstairs. There's a loft area upstairs where you could have an office so you're not wasting a bedroom. And then there's also a finished basement too. So 379 might be a touch high, but it's not, again, it's not that far off and it's an active price range. So sometimes strategically, that's not such a bad move. Cartmer's at 409. And I could swear they've raised the price on this one, but it is what it is. It backs onto the train tracks on Cartmer. Uh, so it has this long lot and then it's got the sloping berm behind, which I guess is fun for the kids to toboggan on, but it's, you do still hear the train. You're close enough that you hear it. Nice high nine foot ceilings in here, which doesn't make it seem as much like a townhouse. And it's a pretty big open layout. There's pillars here to try and reduce the effect of walls, which I think overall is a pretty positive thing. I think it's got a nice layout. There's a balcony off off the second floor, four bedroom or yeah, four bedrooms and uh, they're all good size and it looks like there's a finished basement which I think is going to help their cause. Jervis Terrace 434. It's a townhouse. It has no backyard. It's three stories with a double car garage behind and I like the lights. I like the look of this one but it just doesn't look, I don't know if it's the photos, if it's maybe a, 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 like a a low quality camera, but I think a pro camera would really capture this one well. Uh, the hardwood floors, I mean, it's got the upgrades, it's got the look. Uh, love what they did in the back here too. A little bit of privacy because you're basically backing on uh, end on end on your neighbors. There's a laneway where you access your garage, but that's a nice little view there. I think this one has a lot to offer. I just, I'd be concerned that the pictures aren't bringing out that magic that I think this one has. Uh, it does still seem a little bit high, even with uh, a lot of good upgrades inside. Liederman is at 454.9, and it's about a 1,600 square foot home. And uh, you can see the front dining room here. That's your family, there's your kitchen. And it says it's four bedrooms, but I think what they're doing is they're actually taking the loft upstairs as a bedroom, uh, because normally there is there's there's something considered to be a loft up there. Now they may have closed it in. Uh, it looks like the second, third, and fourth bedrooms all have closets, so that is a possibility that they did do that. Uh, it's actually not a bad move because sometimes the loft can be an awkward space. McDougal is 1987 square feet. It's a Southbury model. 455 is the price and a sideways shot. Come on, this is ridiculous. And you know what it looks like? It kind of looks like somebody rented the place. Uh, it just it doesn't have that nice zip to it. Uh, the models can sell for this. They are really big. Uh, I still think it's a little high. I don't know if the, the marketing and the presentation is really going to do it any justice. Granky looks like another one of the, uh, the 1,600 square foot homes. There's your dining room just off to the side. And then your family. There's your kitchen. 
I'm not sure about this trend of mismatched cabinets, having the dark and the light and the light and the dark. I'm just not sure how long that's going to last for. I know it's trendy. I just look at this. I go in homes from the 80s all the time. Even stuff Mad Me built 10 years ago, and I go, ooh, what were we thinking? But at the time, it seemed, it seemed like a good idea. I have a feeling the mismatched cabinets are going to fall into there. I do like the pantry here. I like the crown moldings that they've done. They've actually done a nice job on their upgrades here. Uh, I'm, I guess I'm just more looking at what's simple, what's classic, what's still going to be around 20 years from now. And I think kitchens that are all the same color definitely fit into that category. There's uh, actually, when we talk about the same models before, that's your loft area that these guys have turned into a sitting area. And there's your master there. And it looks like the fence posts are in, so they may already be in process of putting the fence in. And it could be ready by the time someone wants to move in. Forbes Terrace 469. It's a 2200 square foot uh, semi detached California shutters. It's a Heathwood home, so you know they did it up. Nice nine foot ceilings here, granite counters, backsplash. These guys are going to do well. I'm, I think they've got they've got the double sinks, they've got the larger mirror here. They're going to do well. I think overall this is a good listing. Yeah, a lot better than some of the Yazalees. That's the name of the model, the Yazalee. Uh, a lot better than than many of them that we see for sale. Now the chuck pick of the day, I think it's going to go to Boosfield. It's at four ninety nine. It's up in Dorset Park. It's got a rear double car garage, which is sometimes hard to find up there. I know there's some in the lower fours but none of them are really that special. Uh, this one here has had some renovations done, some stonework in the walls. You've got a, a looks like an open concept kitchen, which is almost impossible to find in this neighborhood. And uh, they've done a lot of renos here. Uh, I, I would be interested to see how the, the minor, the small finishes are done, but if they're done well, this could be a really special, really unique property. And they've got a pool in the back. They've got a pie-shaped lot. There's so many things about this home that I think are really exciting to buyers. The fact that it's a four-bedroom, it's got a finished walkout basement is an awesome listing. Now, they're holding back on offers until next Tuesday, and I would be surprised if these guys... Uh, did not sell for more than asking, but it's a great property. So if you want to have a look at this one on the weekend, email us, give us a call, 905-693-9346. I think it's a wonderful house and uh, something you just don't see every day, which is what we love here at Daily Homes. So Zeus is uh, 513, and I know Colin Best gets on my case because I can never say it right. Um, actually, you know what? Reminding me, it's called Zest. That's what he says. It's, it's called Zest, but I guarantee that 90% of the people that live on the street are calling it Zeus, and it looks like a, a Plan 5 corner from Mad Me, one big room, and then you've got your kitchen with the Eden on the main floor and four bedrooms upstairs. And it's a uh, seller acting as their own listing agent. And we've talked about the pros and cons of that in past episodes. Now we've got this one here on Bustle, 559.9. And I've seen this one in person. The kitchen seems a little bit small. Everything just looks a little worn in with this home. And they've got this hand scraped hardwood floor, but it's like the imitation hand scraped. And, and I don't know if I love it. Um, the real hand scrape looks beautiful. The imitation stuff can really not do you justice at all. And uh, there you go, glass shower. Now it does back onto green space. My understanding is there are gonna be uh, homes eventually built there. And 559 is the price. Yeah, it's okay. So Scott, 569.9. And you look in here, here's another trend. Don't go crazy on your backsplash. Keep it neutral, keep it simple. Your backsplash shouldn't be the first thing people see when they walk into your kitchen. And so this little checkerboard connect the dots design is probably not gonna help them. Neither is fruit on your backsplash. That doesn't help your cause. Just stay away. Simple, all the same tone, or something that has a pattern that's consistent. Okay, so nice effect in the, uh, the family room. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's three bedrooms at 569. I think there's probably better deals out there. Hearst is a Mannington corner. It's about 27, 2750 square feet, 6149. They have sold right in this area for this price. Hardwood floor. I don't have a picture. It's got a big kitchen with a ton of cabinets. 
And uh, it's got a really neat area upstairs. The Mannington has this area where uh, the bedrooms all open to this middle ground. So it's a great place for the kids to hang out, video games, homework. It's a nice little space. So Switzer Crescent, 739. It's a Tothberg, 3331 square feet. And it looks like it's got the goods inside the crown molding, California shutters, hardwood floor, all the rest of it. Even hardwood in the library upstairs. So I think these guys are probably in the right spot. The good Tothbergs do sell for that range. Now last one is this one on fourth line. It's about 10 acres. Uh, now it looks like it's Rockwood Highway 7. I, it could be a little further north. 1.4 basically. It's a triple car garage. And uh, beyond there, it's it's got a uh, 2,600 square foot stall. It doesn't say how big the house is. It looks like it's a three bedroom on the ground floor. And uh, we'll just have to see the photos. If it's really spectacular, who knows, maybe. But uh, at first glance, it seems a little bit high when I think about the size of the home, the size of the land, and the price. So anyhow, that's the list for today. If you have any questions, give us a call. Like I said, come join us. We'd love to, uh, to chat with you and just make sure that you're doing the right stuff at the right time when you're buying so that you can make better decisions, stay safer. So have a great day.